How's it going everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going over how you can get every single artifact currently available in New World. But first, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel, it helps out massively. Now, let's get into it. The first batch of artifacts released with the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion, and we currently have 29 artifacts available to get in-game. As more are released, I will do a part 2 to this video, but for now, I will be showing you all of the artifacts and letting you know where they will drop from. I will have them all sorted by which kinds of activities drop them, but if you are looking for a specific artifact, feel free to use the timestamps in the video to jump to the specific artifact you are looking for. Now, let's get started. The first artifacts we are going to go over are the ones awarded on the PvP tracks. I will let you know what level PvP track you need to be before you start getting them, which checkpoint they will appear on, what minimum level your character needs to be, and how much Azoth salt they will cost you. Let's start off with the Ankh Amulet. For this one, you need to be a minimum level of 61, have a PvP track level of 50 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. Next up is the Shield, Michael. For this one, you need to be a minimum level of 61, have a PvP track level of 20 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. After that, we have Pestilence, the Blunderbuss. For this one, you need to be a minimum of level 61, have a PvP track level of 50 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth Salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. Next up is Serenity, the Greatsword. For this one, you need to be a minimum level of 61, have a PvP track level of 20 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth Salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. After that, we have the medium chest wear, Nimble Coat. For this one, you need to be a minimum level of 61, have a PvP track level of 100 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth Salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. Next up is the Heavy Headwear, Unyielding. For this one, you need to be a minimum level of level 61, have a PvP track level of 100 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth Salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. And finally, we got the Heavy Legwear, Freedom. For this one, you need to be a minimum level of level 61, have a PvP track level of 20 or higher, have 50,000 Azoth Salt, and it can appear as any of the three options on checkpoint 3. That covers all of the ones attainable via the PvP track. Next up, we got a couple that currently can be obtained from the free version of the Season Pass of Season 3. If that's no longer active, maybe they will add other ways of obtaining them in the future. The first of these is the Light Footwear Tumbler Feet Wraps. You unlock this by reaching level 20 of the free version of Season 3's Season Pass. And then, you have the Earring Jewelry, Endless Thirst. You unlock this one by reaching level 100 of the free version of the Season 3 Season Pass. That covers the ones you can obtain via the Season Pass. Next up, we got the items that drop from bosses out in the open world. I'll show you where these bosses spawn and let you know if you'll need a group to farm this or not. It's worth noting, when going for these artifacts, throwing on some luck gear and food can help you out. First up, we got the Light Chestware, Featherweight and it drops from Nurmur over in the Elysian Wilds. You want to teleport into the Firefly's Vantage fast travel point and head down into Fungal Ridge. Climb up to the top of the massive tree-like structure in the middle of the map and you'll spawn up there. He is solo friendly but there's usually a group of people camping him to help you out. Next up, we got the Medium Gloves, Ghoul Gloves, and they drop from two bosses, the Overgrown Guardian or Adiana's Chosen Beast. They both can be found in the Elysian Wilds and you can see where they spawn on screen now but I recommend grinding out the Overgrown Guardian, simply due to its lower level, especially if you don't have a group. To get to the Overgrown Guardian, you want to teleport into the Dayspring Road fast travel point in the Legion Wilds, and then run south to this area on the map. He spawns on the elevated platform, so if you're on the ground level, you're in the wrong spot. He's a really easy boss to solo if you got some decent gear on, so no group is needed. After that, we got the Musket, the Mechanic, which drops from the Toymaker for that over in the Legion Wilds. To get to him, you're going to want to teleport into the Bullseye Outpost and run south to this area on the map. He's on the top floor of the tower. You can jump from the rocks to the floating platforms to get to him easily. You will also want to be in a group to grind this boss out, because he's extremely difficult to solo. Next up, we got the Rapier, Finisher, which drops from Montrapala, the Unruled, over in the Legion Wilds. To get to him, you gotta head over to the Isle of Zervan, which if you haven't gone there before, you get there by teleporting to the Shrine of the Lion fast travel point and climbing the mountain beside it before crossing the bridge in the air to the island. From there, head over to this spot on the map where he will be spawning. He's extremely difficult to solo and many more similar mobs spawn after you defeat him so I would for sure recommend doing this in a group. Luckily, since it's such a sought after item, there's usually a lot of people camping his spawn anyways. 
After that, we got the Void Gauntlet's Life Taker, which drops from Panaceus Purutu over in the Elysian Wilds. Like with the finisher artifact, you need to head over to the Isle of Zervan, which if you haven't gone there before, you get there by teleporting to the Shrine of the Lion Fast Travel Point and climbing the mountain beside it, before crossing the bridge in the air to the island. Once there, head to this area on the map. It's an elevated platform that requires you to get past a couple of jump puzzles and platform puzzles to get to. If you can't figure it out, check up a guide on YouTube. It isn't that difficult though. You'll find the boss alone on a platform, but he is very difficult to solo, so I recommend coming with the group, if there's not one there already. And as soon as you kill him, three more tough gorillas will spawn, so be ready. Next up we got the flail, Odo, which drops from Vanash, over in the Elysian Wilds. To get to him, you want to teleport into the cave of the full moon fast travel point, and run all the way down into the cave, towards this area on the map. He'll spawn at the bottom of the steps, that have the two elite chests on them. He's relatively difficult to solo, but it is doable with a good build. Luckily enough, there's usually a lot of people here camping the spawn, so you can just join up with the grind group. And finally, we've got the spear, Scorpion's Sting, which drops from Scorpio Supernal over in Brimstone Sands. To get to him, you want to teleport into the Great Shrine of Toth, fast travel point, and follow the path up to this area on the map, the Ordeal of the Scorpion. Unfortunately, this is probably one of the most painful grinds if you're not lucky, since this boss only spawns at night and has a really long respawn timer, so if you're lucky, you'll only get two kills in per night cycle in New World. But here's a good trick to do if you're going about this grind. Whenever you log in, head over to the Scorpion spawn point and wait for the day cycle to enter nighttime. You'll know this has occurred because the Aqua event quest will start right as it hits nighttime. From this point, start a timer for 1 hour and 20 minutes. This is because a night cycle in New World lasts for 30 minutes, and a day cycle lasts for 60 minutes. Then, kill the scorpion boss and teleport out and do whatever else it is you want to do, or you can even leave the game and come back. When the timer is up, that means the boss is 10 minutes away from spawning. Simply head back to the spawn, kill him, and repeat the process. It's still not great, but it makes the whole process a lot less painful, and a whole lot more productive. This boss can be soloed if glitched in certain ways, but it's a pain to do, and it's really hard to solo him legit, so I highly recommend a group for this boss. Luckily, since this is one of the best artifacts in the game, and many people will be grinding this out for a long time to come, there's usually a group going whenever he spawns. If there isn't one, and you're there alone, simply remind people he's up, and you'll most likely have tons of people heading your way. That covers all of the artifacts that drop from open world named bosses. Now let's look at the artifacts that drop from expedition bosses. In order to get these, you need to be at least on mutation level 1. So these will only be gettable on the mutation rotation, and requires you to group up with other people to get it. First up, we got the sword, the butcher, and it drops from the final boss in the dynasty shipyard, Zhao Taiying. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now. The expedition needs to be mutated in order for this artifact to drop. Next up are the heavy gloves, magnetic gauntlets, and they drop from the final boss of the Tempest Heart expedition, Isabella. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now. The expedition needs to be mutated in order for this artifact to drop. After that, we have the Warhammer, Spark of Mjorn, and it drops from the final boss of the Lazarus expedition, Chartis. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now, and the expedition needs to be mutated in order for this artifact to drop. Next up is the Fire Staff, Inferno, and it drops from the final boss in the Imperian Forge expedition, Commander Marius. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now, and the expedition needs to be mutated in order for the artifact to drop. After that, we got the hatchet, Freya's Francisca, and it drops from the final boss in the Genesis expedition, the Blighted Greenskeeper. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now. The expedition needs to be mutated in order for the artifact to drop. Next up is the shield, the wall, and it drops from one of the two final bosses in the Ennead expedition, Heru. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now, and the expedition needs to be mutated in order for this artifact to drop. After that, we have the heavy chestware, Void Darkplate, and it drops from the final boss in the Barnacles and Black Powder expedition, Nereid. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now, and the expedition needs to be mutated in order for this artifact to drop. Next up is the ring jewelry, Blood Drinker, and it drops from the final boss in the Starstone Barrows expedition, Gurengul the Regent. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now, and the expedition needs to be mutated in order for this artifact to drop. And finally, we got the amulet jewelry, Lost Stopwatch, and it drops from the final boss in the Depths expedition, Commander Thorpe. You can see the boss's location in the expedition on screen now, and the expedition needs to be mutated in order for the artifact to drop. 
That covers all of the artifacts that drop from expedition bosses. Now let's look at the ones you can get from corrupted portals. First up, we got the Great Axe, the Abyss. To get this Great Axe, you gotta close major level 65 corrupted portals. These spawn in Reekwater, Brimstone, Sands, and Shattered Mountain. There's usually a group going on in recruitment chat doing portal runs, so simply join up and keep going from portal to portal until you get it. If you get the Abyss, it'll pop up immediately after closing the Breach, not from inside the reward cache. So if you want, you can save up reward caches and open up two of them every day for the 500 gold per day from the coin sacks. Luck Gear increases your odds of getting this drop. And then, we also have the light headwear, Grey Wizard's Hat, which also drops when closing a major level 65 corrupted portals. Close any level 65 portals around Reekwater, Brimstone Sands, and Shatter Mountain for a chance at this item. It'll be awarded to you directly after completing the portal, not from the reward caches, so luck will affect this drop. That covers all of the artifacts that drop from portals. Now let's look at the ones you can get by completing quests or having Artemis Boons active. First, we got the medium legwear, attuned leather pants, which you can get from completing the main story quest line over in the Elysian Wilds. The quest that rewards this artifact is called the End of New Eden, and it's suggested for level 60 and above players. The quest before this one is called One with Nature, and upon completing this quest, you will unlock an additional 7 quests that you can now start. You can start this quest from the NPC Morgane, and complete it by talking to Glendil Traherne. It's a really easy set of quests to get this artifact. And finally, we have the medium headwear, Jin Headwrap, which is one of the more unique ones to get. To get this one to drop, you need to have the Infused Boon of Artemis Potion active, which is a potion that lasts for 120 minutes, giving the player plus 27% more damage and increased loot from creatures in the Elysian Wilds for 270 seconds after becoming spore drenched by a spore cloud. So if you don't fully understand, it's those spore pods you see on the ground around the Elysian Wilds. They have the red mist around them. Going in and out of them will give you this buff, as long as you're under the effects of this potion. Once you have the buff active, killing any monster in the game will give you a chance at getting this artifact. But since the bonus items are only for Elysian Wild enemies, it's probably best to grind your mobs for this artifact there. So that's the official way to do it. But I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but some people in the game, including myself, have gotten this artifact by looting elite beast lord chests around the Elysian Wilds, even without having any boons active. Specifically, the Mammoth Elite chest seems to drop this very frequently, so if you're looking for this one, maybe go ahead and try that before going through the effort of booning up and grinding mobs. It may get patched, but maybe it is supposed to work this way. And that covers how to get every artifact currently in New World. As new artifacts are released, I'll make a part 2 to this video, and link it in the top right of this video and in the video description, so if you're not seeing the artifact you want, check that video out. If this video helped you out at all, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps out massively. But until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching another video. If you'd like to learn about the three best ways to earn dark matter so you can start leveling up your artifacts, click on the video to the left. Or if you'd like to follow me on a lore journey through the New World's main story quest, click on the video to the right.